there's quite a lot of military temples in uh, Luxor. And the three that I want to talk about are grandfather, father, son. Seti I is the grandfather, and Ramses II is the father, and Meren Patel is the son. Now, actually these temples, quite interestingly, reflect the personalities of the pharaoh. Although they all follow the standard pattern, pylon, open courtyard, pylon, open courtyard, hyperstar hall, sanctuaries, they have some quite significant differences. This is the uh, temple of Seti I. So we have the pylon there, we have the open courtyard, we have the temple palace, second pylon, another open courtyard, sanctuaries. We have some magazine storage areas, and these would have been used for the offerings. Now this is a temple where the king would have been worshipped in his lifetime, as well as after his death. And although I've used the term mortuary temple, Egyptologists are not that keen on it anymore and prefer to talk about temples of millions of years. So you needed to store somewhere to have all these offerings. So um, the linen, alabaster, etc. would have all been stored here. You've got some uh, areas here where butchery took place. Um, the temple palace is not where the king lived. It's more like a summer house. So I suspect that when he was coming here for the offerings, he needed somewhere to have a picnic. Um, it's not got uh, really good um, kitchens or anything like that in it. So, um, and it's quite small, actually. I mean, it's quite impressive, but it's quite small. Um, you've got a, a small sacred uh, well here. Now, the really interesting thing about this is the background on, on Seti I is that after the Amarna period, we had a huge period of instability. And um, it started getting stable with uh, Horemheb. And uh, he didn't have an heir. So he appointed one of his generals to be the next pharaoh. And that was Ramses I. Now, Ramses I didn't live very long. It was only about 18 months, something like that. Uh, so Seti was uh, quite um, an old man uh, when his father was appointed um, as pharaoh. So he, had, it would have been unexpected to him. He wasn't um, brought up as pharaoh's son or anything like that. And as a consequence, Seti is very religious. This temple is absolutely covered of scenes of Seti offering to gods. Um, these sanctuaries here are Amun, Muk, Khonsu, Osiris and Ptah. Um, now, the, the actual bit here, where it says cult of, uh, um, chapel of the royal cult, that first bit there is Ramses the first. You actually have to come out round the side and to the back to the bit that is dedicated to Seti the first. He really made himself quite unimportant in this temple. Although it's dedicated to him, it's the main thrust of it is the gods, the gods, the gods. And um, the position of Seti in these uh, scenes is he's, he's kneeling, he's bowing, he's um, always, you know, in a subservient kind of position to the gods. Um, so that's Seti. Now we come on to Ramses the, the second. Now, I have a, a horrid suspicion that Ramses the, the second was a, an, a brat. I, I can just imagine him going around saying, my grandfather's got made pharaoh, my daddy's pharaoh. I think he was appalling. And he had very grandiose ideas as a consequence. I've been chosen. I think he was the wrong age. Said he was a very good pharaoh, but I don't think he was a very good father. It's a very subjective, personal view, but it's mine. 
Now, this is Ramses II's uh, temple. So we have the same basic plan. Open courtyards, pylons, hyperstyle halls, sanctuaries. But look at the magazine storage area. It is massive. This guy wants lots of offerings. He has a temple palace, the same, and more magazine storage areas. Now, where in this is the sanctuaries to the gods and the sanctuaries to Ramses. It's all Ramses. There are no sanctuaries here to Armand Mutt and Konsu. It is Ramses, 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 Ramses. And he, if you see him in all wall, uh, wall decorations, he's always upright. He's important, he's a god. At the symbol, his statue's at the back with the other gods, same size. Ramses really, really seriously reckoned himself. Um, the, this has uh, the Colossus statue in it, which is the uh, poem, uh, Ozymandias. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Now, this is another very personal point of view. Uh, it's asymmetrical within the temple. It's just on one side of the main courtyard. Now, I think there was two of them. I cannot believe any temple had an off-center statue in it. I think it was designed to have two. And whether the second one got lost on the way, was never built, fell in the Nile, whatever, but I think that there was two of them. Um, it's an amazing statue to look at the craftsmanship on it. He's got stripes of the Nemi's headcloth. And how they've done it is, is make the uh, granite, granite, remember your granite worktop, They've made it matte and then shiny, matte and then shiny. Now, they didn't have diamond chip things or steel. We're talking copper tools. And they did this. And, and if you look at the stripes on this Nemi's headcloth, it's absolutely amazing. And if you look at the uh, toes, you can see the cuticles round the toenails and the little wrinkles of the, on your toes. It is just an incredible incredible piece of artistry, it really is, and it's huge, I mean it's seriously, seriously massive. It's just recently um, been, the feet have been moved onto a pedestal, but the rest of it is fallen, which happened uh, with an earthquake, um, and there's quite a lot of colour left in there, and there's also lots of battle scenes. Now, uh, these are, uh, if you thought Goebbels was good at propaganda, he was nothing on Ramses II because Ramses had this big battle, the Battle of Kadesh. Now, if you were looking round at his wall decorations, you would have thought he won it. I'm sorry, he didn't. It was a draw at best. Uh, but that is not the way it is portrayed. It is portrayed as a massive victory by Ramses and he personally went in and scattered the enemy with his pet lion. Do not forget his pet lion. Um, and <laughs> uh, he doesn't mention that the other divisions came up and that he'd actually made some bad strategic decisions separating out his divisions going along. Um, but anyway, this is Ramses. He likes to... Uh, to uh, portray himself bigger and better than anybody else. Now, he was on the throne a long time. And uh, a bit like Prince Charles, his sons had to wait a long time to come uh, to the throne. And in fact, by the time he died, 12 of his sons had died. So it was his 13th son, Merin Patar, who came to the throne. Now, poor old Meryn Tatar hadn't got much time to build anything because he was quite an elderly man by the time he came to the throne. So his temple, it follows the same pattern, pylon, open courtyard, pylon, open courtyard, hyperstar hall, but look how small it is. Um, it's got a similar design with a... Um, uh, uh, an area here which is the sun court um, and then some shrines around more modest magazine storage area 
a temple palace here. Um, so very, very similar in design, but much, much smaller. And um, Marin Patar uh, didn't uh, excavate all his uh, granite himself. Right next door was the temple of Amenhotep III, which is um, the Colossus of Menon are in front of it. And that had been destroyed in an earthquake and uh, there was lots and lots of granite and sandstone and limestone lying around. And um, uh, Meren Patar reused this to build his temple. And in fact, a very, very famous thing here is the Israeli stele. Um, and uh, this, it's just in that first courtyard at the corner there. Um, now this is the first mention of the Israelites and uh, has led to some thoughts that this was the time of the Pharaoh of the Exodus. But we are not sure because um, the Bible does not mention the name of the Pharaoh. Um, it just says Pharaoh. It's like saying White House instead of saying President Obama. So we don't know which Pharaoh. But uh, the Israelites are mentioned. However, on the reverse side, there is an inscription by Amen Hotep III. So even in this terribly famous stele, and it, it's huge, it's it's about six foot, seven foot high, um, and maybe about three foot wide, um, and black basalt, it's really lovely. Um, it's a reused piece, and he reused pieces all over the shop. And the Swiss who excavated here um, have put some of the pieces out in a small museum in the temple complex and some underground storage areas and you can see where these pieces actually fitted in the Amen Hotep III temple um, and you can see the Amarna destruction where they carved out the name of Amen Hotep and then it's been re-inscribed again and then it's collapsed and then it's been reused by Meren Patar and etc etc. So that is your grandfather father, son. So we have the grandfather, Seti, very religious, very pious, who uh, made his temple to the gods with him as a small addition. We have Ramses II, huge great temple, Ramses, 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 masses of magazine storage area, because he really did expect to be worshipped for a million years. And then we have poor old Meren Ptah, who was in his 60s when he came to the throne and built this tiny, tiny little temple, along the same style as his father, but not quite as good in his ground.